Welcome to another edition of the A-List Podcast. I'm your host, A. Shra Blakely, with Kwani A. Lunas. Now, now, Kwani, we always kick this thing off talking about the Celtics and, and, and our guests. But Kwame Brown is like the number one pick in everyone's – he's what everyone is talking about. Um, I've seen some players throw shade, but damn, Kwame, th- this is a little different. <laughs> It was one of those 2021 storylines that none of us expected, but I've been here for it. I've been tuned in. I watched the one on Tuesday morning, and I got to say, he is understandably upset about a lot of things, but Mm -hmm. I do wish his approach was a little better because we can't play any of the sound because it's not safe for any workplace. (laughs) No, it's it's not. And, you know, he's taking aim at Matt Barnes. He's taking aim at Steven Jackson. He's taking aim at Gilbert Arenas. I was just listening to him a few minutes ago. He's going after Stephen A. Smith now. I um, saw that. Rachel yeah. Nichols a little bit. So he he is. I mean, he is. He's got this. He's got the spray gun, and he's trying to hit everyone. The, there's a lot of stuff that you know I'm I'm bothered by with what he says. Um, mm-hmm. but the one thing that he talks about, and and I, I wish he could just kind of delve a little bit deeper into it. He talks about that there's this culture or this climate of disrespecting black men. Um, and I wish he would delve a little bit deeper into that because all of the other stuff, you know, the Becky with the good hair jabs at, yeah. at Matt Barnes and, you know, some of the shots that he takes, it, it feels a bit over over the top. And I, I listened to like that first podcast with Gilbert Arenas and uh, Steven Jackson and, and, and Matt Barnes. And I could see why it bothered him. Absolutely. But it didn't feel like it was this. uh uh, a lot of what they were saying was was the fact that they felt that because he was a teenager and he was drafted by Michael Jordan and 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 the Wizards, that was not a good combination. And it, they, it, I got the sense that it was more because of Michael and just how Michael interacted with folks than it was anything that Kwame lacked. But man, Kwame took that personal as an MF. Um, but you know, to that point, it just shows that he has been holding this in for years and. He has been a butt, the butt of a lot of NBA jokes. So, again, I understand the fact that over the years he's been made fun of and he maybe felt as though it was a media agenda against him as a black man. And a lot of the points he made, like you said, were very accurate when it comes to sometimes the media not giving black men a fair chance. But in his case, I think it definitely is something that's personal. And he's he needs a therapy session to really unwrap this because. He's been holding on to this for a while. I just want, I just want, I want to give Kwame a big fat hug, man, because yeah, I, 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 a lot of stuff that he's saying is like, I kind of want to agree with him on. Yeah. But I, between the MS and SOBs okay. and inward yeah, this, inward yeah. that, it's, it's hard for me to wrap myself around what he's trying to do. But at least yeah. it gives us something to talk about when, if, as it relates to the Washington Wizards for that sure. we wouldn't be talking about That's already. Um, right, exactly. But, but we, but, but, we have to come back to the real world and reality and, and deal with the fact that the Wizards are in town. Celtics will be playing them in the first annual play-in game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know, Kwani. I mean, if you look at the records, you think like, oh, not a big deal. But if you look at the way they played, this is not going to be an easy one for the Celtics to win. And I actually just read a piece by our guy, David Aldridge of The Athletic, and he talked to Bradley Beal about the fact that He's going to be playing, even though he technically shouldn't. He's playing with a sprained ankle right at the moment. He's willing and hungry to play in this game. And I think for the Celtics, that's one of the players where you really have to look out for between him and Russell Westbrook. Like you said, I am very curious as to how this matchup will play out because the Wizards are, they're not fully healthy, but they're going to play with most of their star players. Yeah, most of their star players. And more importantly, they're going to play hard because they are looking at this as an opportunity to be on a come up. Uh, mm-hmm. You look at them like the last 20 games. They've been one of the best teams in the NBA, 15 and five. They mm-hmm. get a lot of their baskets around the rim. They get to the free throw line. They do the kind of things that the Celtics, frankly, don't do. And mm-hmm. that makes me a little bit nervous about this game. Uh, obviously, one of the key players in the Celtics' chances of winning will be Jason Tatum. And mm-hmm. Jason Tatum, he's been the subject of a lot of content that people are putting out these days are you, uh, are you talking about what i'm talking about i think i'm about- thinking about the i'm thinking about the chad finn piece that uh <laughs> basically the headline i'm just gonna focus on the headline because i read the story yeah, a couple times the too. story the story wasn't nearly as like damning as i thought the headline was the i mean headline- the headline go ahead 
the, oh, sorry, the headline was just clip clickbaity. Overall, it it essentially said Jason. It, the Celtics would be better if Jason Tatum had looked up to Kevin Garnett instead of Kobe Bryant. First of all, sensitive subject, still too soon. Anytime you put Kobe in a headline, you're automatically going to get hate. Second of all, I understood his point to your, like, as you mentioned when I read the article, I understand where he was going when it comes to Kobe ball versus KG ball and really being an unselfish Celtic as the core of red ba- our back going way back. That's what he looks for in his players. But at the same time, it, I just think it was unfair to have that headline because people are understandably very upset about it. They are, and they should be. Uh, here, here's the thing that I, I come back to. Above any and all, there's a lot of points that you can make why this was flawed. But to me, the biggest one is this. Kevin Garnett's intensity was what got him to be one of the all-time greats. And Tatum is just built differently. But when you want him to look at Kevin as the as the model of how he should be versus Kobe, remember this. Kobe's way got him a handful of rings. Mm-hmm. KG got one. Yep. And, and that's no shade at KG, but that's just the reality of yep. – Everyone has their own path towards greatness. And Tatum, he lashed his wagon to try to be like Kobe. And last I checked, it's worked out pretty damn good. He's 23 years old. He's a two-time All-Star. He's got a max contract that's going to kick in, you know, a a year from now. And if all things being equal, he's got a good decade to enhance his ability to be more KG-like and play with more intensity and do all those type of things. I'm not worried about him. And I, I, it just – the headline felt like, seriously, y'all, really? Um, It was – I saw someone call out Boston media again, and I was like, you know what? I'm not even mad at you because it happens so often that I can understand how fans are just upset when they see things like that. Yeah, well, the bottom line is this. Tatum, the season is over for pretty much everyone in the league except for those in the playoffs and those in the plan. And they've got the Wizards coming up now, and it's a game they, I think, should win. But I don't think it's going to be easy. And when you think about what the Celtics need to beat this Wizards team, what do, what do you think are some of the, the needs that they, they need to really uh, work on it and, and get done? The Celtics? Yeah. Well, definitely the scoring. The, it, Jason Tatum cannot be the only person that you go to, especially this is playoff ball. It's not mm-hmm. what we've been looking at the regular season. He is obviously the, the go-to guy in the clutch, but at the end of the day, they need other people that can facilitate and really help them get the – offense going because at the end of the day they're not going to win the defense is definitely not going to carry them so they need some offense to really get through this this play in game and yeah that- and you look just the way they're built they've got a number of guys that can get it done offensively on the perimeter they could certainly use a little boost offensively in the front court i think at that four or five position and our guest uh is a former celtic who I would say was a pretty good score around the basket when he was in Boston. Uh, our, our guest today is former Boston Celtic, Jared Sullinger. Uh, he's going to be joining us in, in a few minutes. And, and again, he's coming off uh, just a really good season in the Korean Basketball League. We'll talk a little bit about that. And we'll get into just what else is in the cards for Jared Sullinger. Could a return to Boston be in the cards oh, for Jared Sullinger? Yeah, we're going to find out. We've been talking about it. Now we're going to be about it. We're going to the source. As Kwame Brown would want us to do, we're going to the source. So that being said, let's let's go talk to our good friend, Jared Sullinger. Jared, welcome to the A-List Podcast, brother. How you doing? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Just enjoying life and, and enjoying the kids. Man, listen, before we even get into this, brother, you look so good. And, t- and please take that the right way. You looking good, brother. <laughs> Appreciate I mean, now, it. Where, where are you at weight-wise now, man? My goodness. Uh, between 260, 265. Just depends oh. on what I eat the night before. <laughs> Brother, I'm, I'm, oh man. Me and Sash, I, I, I knew you lost some weight. Your daddy did, Sash didn't tell me you lost this much weight though. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, yeah, I had to, man. I had to, you know, the kids so I'm not need gonna, to eat. Right, I'm not going to lie. The, when I started in sports media here, the biggest storyline was about your weight. And that's like the one thing I remember about you. It was just so terrible, but congratulations. You're doing well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. That was everybody's storyline about it. Seriously. Me. It was like, does he not have any other traits? Like, why are we always talking about this? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, y'all do realize that he getting y'all like like double digit points and rebounds almost every night, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> y'all, y'all do realize he like balling. Um, but look, man, yeah. right right off the right off the bat, man, I, I want to talk about just your time over in, in Korea and, and congratulations on that chip. Uh yeah, appreciate so, it. So, I did not see the game. I saw clips from the game. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you were doing kind of what you have done for a long time. Um, take us through how that whole opportunity came about for you to kind of play 
over in, in the KBL and, and just what experience do you take away from that and, and doing so in the middle of a pandemic? Honestly, man, when, uh, you know, going through the whole process, I was trying to wait out, trying to get into the, either the G League or the NBA, either or, whatever was, was trying to accept me, but uh, didn't get no, no looks. Um, you know, I played in the, in the China League and, and I didn't get no looks over there either in the, in the CBA. So um, KBL came out of nowhere. The head coach, you know, kind of swooped me off my feet and, and gave me an opportunity. And so I just took it. I took the bulls by by the horn and, and just, you know, accepted the, the challenge. And I thought it'd be a cool comeback story, you know, being away from the game for a minute and then come back and, and try to win the championship. And um, the coach always said that was his main goal and, and the reason why he brought me over there. So I'm just glad I was able to fulfill that. Now, what was that and, oh. Go ahead, Kwani. What was that time like when you were waiting for the next opportunity, knowing that you love the game so much and trying to be patient during that process? I think that's the hardest part. I think that's the hardest part is just trying to be patient. You can't jump on anything and everything. Uh, you just wanted the best opportunity for yourself. And, and I thought, you know, by me waiting and then I got to like mid February and I realized like, you know, the NBA is not going to come calling. The G League has already started it's be done within three weeks. Um, I might as well just go ahead and, and, and make some money and and take care of my family. So um, the opportunity came about and I just kept my head grounded and, and kept grinding every day, working out every day, two times a day and, and just trying to find um, a, a balance of, you know, of being a, a, a father, a husband, and, and a basketball player. And I think that that's really where I kind of focus my attention on, you know, being a husband and a father, and then, you know, carrying it on to being a basketball player. So it was easy for me to stay grounded and, and stay thorough through the process. How much of a change did that that do for you in, in your life, Jared? Those, those components that weren't around when you're in the league and that's being married and, and having kids. How much did that change you as a person? And just frankly, your outlook on this, this game of basketball. It, it changed big time because, you know, it's not, it's not all about yourself anymore. Um, you know, of course I had my wife since, you know, 2011. And um, so that whole process of just realizing that you got to fight for somebody else and, and you got to make sure that there's food on the table for somebody else. So it's just, it just it just makes you it makes you get grounded and it makes you focus on the things that really matters and, and I think that that's part of the reason why I got my weight down so much is because my kids and my wife really matter to me. Mm. My goodness, man, I love this, man, I'm loving this. But listen, enough about your family, enough about <laughs> KBL. <laughs> Let's talk about the NBA and, and really you getting back into the league, brother. I mean, you hungry? I can see you hungry. I, I hear you're hungry. I watch you play. You play hungry. Where does that stand now? Are, do, you, do you got anything set up where you're going to be in a camp or anything like that it, it, or G League or anything like that right now? I, Danny? I, I honestly, you know, I, I've, I've tried almost everything, man. And, you know, at this point, it's, it's about taking care of your family. You know, the money's green everywhere you go. So, I mean, that's that's pretty much what we do this job for is, you know, to get get paid and take care of our family in a, in a, in a lifestyle that we never even thought we could have, you know, growing up. So, um, you know, whatever comes whatever comes my way, I'm, I'm going to take it. But, you know, right now, just sitting back and relaxing and, and getting ready to enjoy these playoffs. Yeah, I was I mean, how has that been for you since you left? I mean, have you had any conversations with Dan? Has there been any inkling that they might want to bring you back into the fold? Uh, honestly, no, not honestly, no, but you know, I still keep in contact with Danny just because of what he did for me, um, back in 2012, uh, selecting me at 21st pick in, in the first round. So, you know, me and Danny kind of have a relationship, ongoing relationship, regardless of, you know, how everybody looks at it. Um, you know, he changed my life forever. So I, I'm always going to be thankful for that, for that man right there. So he always has my full support. And if he needs me, you know, he, I'm one phone call away. You, you clearly see know. with whatever comes your way, you are obviously, like we mentioned, hungry for opportunities, but just really doing what you need to do. If a team were to call, what would you tell them or what would they see on tape as one of your biggest strengths when it comes to what you do on the floor? It's been the same thing since I've been born is rebounding. Um, I rebound the basketball. As, as you, if you ever check out the stats, you know, five foreigners are the, are the leading rebounders of, of the league right now. 
And and so, you know, I would love to be able to change that narrative, especially with, you know, the weight I'm in now, the, the way I can play now and, and um, you know, just be able to be out there longer. I mean, that was the biggest flaw of me uh, going through my, my NBA career was, you know, how long can he play? Can he play X amount of minutes? Can he play every night? And so it's just now I kind of, I, I kind of changed that image about myself, but, you know, I, I can only get an opportunity. If I don't get an opportunity, I can't really show everybody what I can do. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really at peace with, you know, whatever happens. I don't, NBA is not the all in all, but at the end of the day, you still want to be in the NBA. So, um, like I said, I'm at peace with whatever opportunity comes my way. Well, I, I just know in the, in the clips that I've watched of you play over there, the thing that jumps out to me, Jared, is is the lateral quickness, man. It's, it's not because you, you like you said, I mean, you came out the womb grabbing boards, I would imagine. Uh, ever, ever since I've seen you play, you grab rebounds. On my left shoulder, Syracuse, we know that Jared Sullivan can grab rebounds, unfortunately. Uh, we know that firsthand. But the way that you're moving when you don't have the ball, the way that you're able to kind of just your lateral quickness, it's clear that you're moving better than I think you ever have. Uh, I'm look. I'm, I'm gonna just say it in existence, man. You are gonna be on somebody roster come start of the season. I don't know who. I don't know where. I don't know how it's gonna happen. It's gotta happen, man. You you you, you deserve it. That's all I'm saying. I appreciate that, Corny. I'm sorry. I, I cut you off, Corny. That's my bad. No, but this, it's this family funny. here, so you no, know I, I get a little rude. I'm sorry. No, you're good. The one point I was gonna make was to your point. I looked up your high school scouting report, and it was like not only were you one of the two best players in the country, all they wrote about were your rebounds. But my second question was actually going to be about the fact that you were living in Korea. What was that adjustment like going to – I know a lot of players go overseas, but what was the adjustment like for you? Uh, it was pretty easy. You know, being okay. able to – I played in China for two years, and then, you know, going to South Korea was like where, like, it's damn near Americanized. So um, at the end of the day, like, you have any and everything that you, you want in Seoul and I was only 25 minutes away from Seoul. So um, other than it closed down early just because of COVID and everything, and they take COVID real serious over there. Um, I mean, it just closed down early. So I didn't really get the experience like what Seoul is really like, but at the same time, it was it was an easy transition. Thanks. Mm. Now, recently, Mr. Kevin Garnett went into the Hall of Fame and then Next day, they say, oh, by the way, Paul Pierce is coming with y'all next year. <laughs> Mike Gorman, the voice, yeah. he's coming in next year. You were around all three of those guys, obviously with Kevin and Paul more closely than, than Mike. But Paul and Kevin specifically, Jared, what are some of the lessons that you learned in that one year with those guys before they got moved on to, to Brooklyn that, that still kind of resonate with you even now after all these years? I carry it to this day. Is ha find a routine. On game day, do it. Find a routine. Stick to your routine and do it. Um, you know, before practice, do your routine, and and that's what I do every 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 single day. I was in South Korea. I had my routine. I knew what I was doing, where I was getting my shots from, uh, what shots to work on. And I think you know, when they told me that as a youngster, you kind of like, well, but <laughs> right. as you get as you get older and you start realizing like, oh, I'm not shooting the ball well here. That's because I haven't done this, this, and this. Um, you know, it kind of it resonates with you. So um, those two guys always told me to find a routine. And, and and one thing about those two guys is they played just as hard in practice as they did in the game, mm. sometimes harder than pra in practice than they did in the game. So um, there's a reason why they were so great for so long. You mentioned effort. I mean, that's that's really what we're talking about. They had great effort all the time. As a young player coming into the league, how challenging is that to figure out if you're playing hard enough, because in your mind, you're probably playing hard, but then when you're dealing with these grown men who got mouths to feed, they got kids to take care of, they got, you know, yachts to, to, to finance, they play kind of different kind of hard. How was that adjustment for you, and and, and, and what was that like? Uh, I mean, practice was crazy. Practice was crazy. I, I've watched Doc, you know, kick KG out of practice, and, and KG's on the sideline running up and down, mimicking whatever, <laughs> whoever that. subbed him out, you know? And so, like, you look at Paul, Paul's, Paul's always at the gym first, you know, on the bike in a full bone sweat, already lifted, did his shots. Like those guys, like that dedication was was real. And it's the reason why they, you know, they made what they made, but they did what they did at the end mm. of the day. Like it was the reason why they was great. And I keep saying the same thing, but it's the truth. Um, they had millions of reasons why they was great. 
and they did it every day. And it wasn't it wasn't like a sometimes thing. It was an everyday thing for them. And, and that's the reason why they was able to hold a franchise and keep a franchise afloat the way they did. Mm-hmm. Were there um, are there any guys that you play with, whether it was in Boston or, or a little time you spent in Toronto, guys that you still keep in touch with or just guys in the league? I remember you and um, Barnes were, were pretty tight. Harrison. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I still keep up with guys. You know, I, IT is, is for sure one of them. Um, you know, we love know, IT. Everybody does. Everybody does. Um, it's, it's, it's no secret why, you know, his, his personality is infectious. The way he plays, it was just that, that with that nasty attitude, but, you know, could carry a team in a heartbeat. Um, you know, Evan Turner, obviously, just because that's, that's like my brother, that's family. So Amir Johnson, I keep up with, with, with a lot of guys, man. And, and I'm just happy to see them doing well. Game time. It's game time? <laughs> yes. Wait, wait, wait. No, it's game time. Okay, let's go. Let's do it, also, honey. The just told me to hop back on the Peloton, so I'm going to do that after this episode. But <laughs> our game, <laughs> this game is called fill in the lane. We basically give you a sentence and you fill in the blank for it. So the first one is NBA teams will be shocked that I blank now. That I'm skinny. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. Lean. <laughs> lean. Lean. I'm going to go with lean. <laughs> no, you really are kind of skinny. I ain't going to lie. That's, that's the truth. You, you, you ain't lying. You are skinny. <laughs> you do uh, how it started, how it's going, photo on social media or something like that. Yeah. You know, the crazy part is, it's like everybody kept asking me, like, man, you okay? Are you, you sick? I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> like, I'm okay. Yeah. It's mad rude. Like, you know? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, I felt like, you know, I felt great because i was like wow you really care about me but right, in the back right. of my mind I'm like damn that's rude as hell you it, know? Is. <laughs> so. it is it is because because in the pandemic I, I haven't seen my mom in a while and uh she saw me and i, I look a little different since she saw me last because oh, i lost some weight and she's just like boy are you are you eating okay are, are, are you sick i'm like no mama i just stopped doing all them push-ups I stopped doing the pull-ups. Right. I just cut back on the pull-ups. And the weight, it's amazing how you, less pull-ups, less weight. So, yeah. man, yeah. that's All funny. Right, the second one, the Celtic I remember the most when I was here was blank because of blank. Tommy Heisen because of every mm. every conversation we had um, before the game. You know, the, the same voice you got during the play-by-play was the same voice he would, he would tell you and, and teach you in, you know? You know that high pitched voice, like "Come on, you got it." Come on. That, that's what I was hearing that all the time. Like, "Come on, you got to rebound. You got to do this. You got to do that." And you know, it just, you know, when you got so many greats that care about the organization and, and just care about the well being of the game, you know, you just gotta. Those are the those are the people you remember the most. Yeah, and 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 Jared, you uh, you were here at a really just looking at it in retrospect, an incredible time where you had legends both. Off the court, guys like Tommy Heinsohn, you know, on the court, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce. I mean, do you, does it sink in just how unusual that was to have? I mean, just, I mean, not, you didn't just play with some good players. You play with guys who are going down as all time greats. You, the guys that were calling your games were the all time greats at that profession. That is so unusual to have that kind of surroundings at such an early age in the league. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. But, you know, when you're young, you don't really see it until, you right. know, you do your history. And then all of a sudden you, you do your history and you see all these people and you see all these greats and you, you just like, wow, you know, you kind of sit back and just you take it in, you know, but years later, obviously, but you just take it in and you just you just you you love the experience that you you was able to get. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. So now. We've already put it. We already put it out there in 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 the, in the atmosphere that you're gonna be on somebody roster next year. But in case there's a power, a higher being that has a different plan, um, what would you be doing if you weren't back in the league? Would you head back over to Korea, or is there another country that you might be looking to play in? Or, or... you know, it's it's still early. It's still early. Mm-hmm. So you just weigh my options. Just got to weigh my options and, and and talk to the family, see what's best for them. You know, mm-hmm. at, at the end of the day, like I said, it's not about me anymore. I got I, I have a couple other people I have to worry about and make sure they're good. So um, I just got to make sure I'm doing the right thing for the for the right reason. And you've got twins, right? I got twins and I got another one on the way August 29th. 
Whoa. Yeah. So now you got yeah. a three piece. Yeah, I got wow. a three piece chicken dinner. <laughs> there you go. Spicy. <laughs> yep. Spicy. Wow. Well, congratulations, man. Ooh. Good Thank for you, you. man. I, I, and and for those who, who don't know, I mean, Jerry, you come from a, a very athletically inclined family. Your brothers, your pops, uh, you know, you guys, the Sullinger family is well known in athletics in that Ohio area. Uh, have you have you got the the twins? I know they're they're really young. Like they can't they they're not walking yet, are they? No, they're walking. They're walking, talking, and and, and just they're they running. won't shut up. <laughs> they won't shut up. <laughs> they're nineteen months. <laughs> nineteen months after breakfast, you know, my son he runs right into the room, grabs a basketball, and starts shooting. So like he's it's it's already in his blood right now. Start him <laughs> early, because you know when they go visit the uncles, it's gonna be the same. It's gonna be yeah. a basketball nearby, so they 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 have no choice. <laughs> it's not it's nonstop. When like when I was playing in Korea, like our games come on at six o'clock in the morning, and for some reason my son always woke up at halftime to finish watching the game with my wife. So it, it's just it's just something in his blood that is just boiling right now. I just know he's gonna be he's gonna be the next one. See, young fella, getting that film study right now. Yes. Yeah, getting yeah. That film that's study that's right now. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I feel so bad as a parent, man. I screwed my son up so bad. I should have had him watch the film at six in the morning, man. But, you know, here's what it is. Jared Sullinger, my man. Man, this was so good catching up with you, brother. This was really good, man. We got to do it again. Uh, will you, we will definitely figure out a way to get you back in here. Um, after you sign with, I'm not going to put a specific team sure. stuff out there or anything like that. But, um, man, good talking with you, brother. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And, and definitely tell the family I said said hi, and uh, you know, and and tell the boss, Mama Sanja, I said hi because she is the boss. She is. She <laughs> it, it's is. not she even runs. close. Yeah, she runs shop. She absolutely runs shop. That's Smallest true. one with the big with the biggest power. <laughs> yep, that's how it always be. That's always exactly. So tell her definitely. I said what's up. So well, look, Jared, thank you so much for your time, brother, and I'll be talking to you soon. Okay.